In this video, let's start creating our Blazor SSR project so that you can start understanding the project structure of Blazor SSR, which is the base of all of the other type of Blazor project. Okay, let's go to Visual Studio here. And what I have here is Visual Studio 2022 version 17.8.6. Let's go to File and go to Create a New Project. And here, what we are going to search for is Blazor Web App. So Blazor in the past have different variations. In .NET 8, it's combined into one template, which is Blazor Web App. You are going to see other older templates like Blazor WebAssembly standalone, Blazor Server as well. Blazor Web App is the template for .NET 8 and it's the recommended template. So therefore, we're going to choose the Blazor Web App template. Let's click on Next. And then you choose a location, provide a solution name. Here, I'm going to call it Blazor Deep Dive. And this project is a server management project. So we're going to create a server management application for teaching purpose. Now click on the Next button. And we have this complicated screen here. Of course, we're going to select .NET 8. And then we're going to leave the authentication type as none because later we're going to add authentication to it. For now, just leave it as none. And we're going to keep this checked because we're going to use HTTPS. And for now, we are going to keep this interactive runner mode as none. You open it up. You can see that we have none, server, WebAssembly, and then we have this auto. So none means there's no interactivity, which is the base of everything and which is the Blazor SSR, static server-side rendering. So we are going to select none. And then later, we're going to talk about the option of server, option of WebAssembly, and the option of auto. But for now, if we choose none, that means we're working with Blazor server-side rendering. In fact, when you create a project, I suggest you to select none at the beginning because in your application, you're going to find a lot of pages are static pages and you don't need interactivity. Therefore, you're going to select none and then you are only going to add interactivity to the components that actually requires interactivity. Once you select none, this interactivity location doesn't actually matter. Right? So just ignore it. And we're going to include some sample pages and then click on create. Let's close this and focus on the right hand side here in the solution explorer here. And as you can see that if you have worked with C Sharp project, you are going to be very familiar with this program CS. This is like a console application. When this app that run is running, it basically runs in a loop and listens to HTTP request comes in. And then once the HTTP request comes in, it's going to go through these functions. And these functions is called middleware. So it's going to come over here and then go through here, go through here. Each one of them either add different things to the request or, or handles it with certain functionalities. When it comes to this map reader components here, this middleware is going to map the HTTP request to the app class. So what is this app class? Let's open up this components. This class, when you click into it, you can see that this is a plain HTML page, except that it has a root component and a head outlet component. So this app not reader component because it has HTML and you're going to find that this is the only place that has the HTML element here. So this is the root component. All of the request that comes into this program is going to be mapped to this root component over here. And when we say Blazor is a single page application framework, the single page is referring to this root component, which is this app.razor component. And then this root component uses a roots component to find corresponding component. In previous lessons, we talked about how Blazor works, you know, the web server maps to the page, which is the root component. And then Blazor finds the component and place that component inside the root component. Here, we're seeing this actual root component, which is this app.razor. 
And then the roots component here is taking the responsibility of finding the corresponding component, whether it's component one, component two, or whatever component you name it. And let's go to this roots component, which is actually sitting right here. And this is actually a router component. This router component finds the corresponding component. Like I said, whether it's component one or component two or whatever the name that you give it and applies a master layout, which generates a HTML, right? A final HTML result. And that final HTML result will replace the router component, which means that if we come back to the root component, the final HTML result will replace this. And therefore we generating a beautiful HTML result. And then another request comes in to this program.cs is going to again map to the app component from the app component. It goes to the roots, which is the router component. Okay. So let's go to the roots component here. And then the router component is going to find a corresponding component and then applies the main layout again, and then generate the HTML result. And then it's going to replace this with the HTML result. And you will have a complete HTML result render to the browser. So the only piece of puzzle here that I didn't explain is how this main layout works, right? How is this main layout applied? So let's go to the main layout, which is actually under the layout folder here. You can see that the main layout also has the same extension name, which is dot razor. That means it's a razor component, which is actually a blazer component. Blazer component is technically called razor component, right? That's why it has a dot razor extension. And here you can see that it has some HTML and then there is a at body. So this at body is a placeholder for any components, no matter which component is required by the user. It will come over here and replace this at body placeholder. So that's how this layout, this layout is applied to your custom build component. Once it replaces this body placeholder, this is the HTML result. And this HTML result will replace the router component here. And then in turn, it replaces the roots component here and generate the final HTML that can be displayed inside a browser. So this is how it all works in theory, the whole sequence. First, it comes to program.cs, then it goes to app.razor, which is the root component. Then it goes to the roots component to find the custom component. And then it applies the main layout, and then the final HTML is going to be rendered inside the browser. So one, two, three, and four. All right, so let's actually run this application and see it in action. The application is running. And first of all, let me show you that in addition to this browser that is launched, uh, I have a console application that is launched as well. When I hover over here, you can see that this actually points to my solution the debug folder. And you can see that it says ser server management.exe. So this is actually a console application and it tells you that it's listening to localhost at 7152 port number, or it's listening to this at a different port number. And then it tells you where the root path is. So this is the root path. This shows you that this is actually working as a console application. And this console application is listening to two different ports. Right? When the request comes in, then the programs.cs right here will start picking up the request and process the request through different middleware. Okay, let's come back and focus on the application itself. What you actually see mostly is the main layout. Okay, so let's take a look at the main layout again. So main layout .razor, and then it has a sidebar. You can see sidebar here on the left and then the main area on the right. Pay attention to this body here. I'm going to come back over here. So this is the sidebar on the left. And then this is the main area here. So what is being displayed here is the home component. 
when I click on the weather link here, and as you can see that left hand side didn't change, right? Because it comes from the main layout, only this part changed. That means the whole sequence that I mentioned is working, right? So because it goes to this URL, then this program.cs map that request to the root component. The root component then uses the roots, which is the router component, to find the corresponding component. And where is that corresponding component? That is under the pages folder here. So that's the weather component. And then the router component here is going to apply the main layout to the weather component, which means all of the HTML inside the weather.razor, right, inside this weather component, will replace this body placeholder. And then this final HTML will replace this component over here. If I open up the developer tool here on the right hand side, like this, you can see I have this framework blazor.web.js, which is inside this root component here. On the top, we don't see roots anymore. What we see is div class page. And where does this come from? Okay, pay attention to here. So that we have this script tag here, and then above that is a div. So where does this div come from? That is from the main layout here. You can see div class page, and then we have a sidebar here. Coming back over here, we have this div class page, and let's open it up. Then we have sidebar on the left, and then the main area on the right. Everything inside here is from the actual weather component element here. That's from the weather component. When we go back, you can see that the inner content of this article element is replaced and where does this content come from? That's the home component over here. So it's under the pages folder. We have this home component. You can see that it's exactly the HTML inside the browser over here. Okay, so in this video, we have gone through this whole process of rendering this basic application. We have seen how the request is handled through different levels of components. And through this example, I hope you can see this project structure of Blazor very clearly. So this project structure is the project structure for Blazor static server-side rendering. It is exactly the same if you want to add server-side interactivity. But when you want to add WebAssembly interactivity to your application, there is going to be another additional project added. But how this part works stays the same. So that's why I say that Blazor's static service at rendering is the base of everything else. Okay, that's everything I want to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.